Don't you absolutely hate it when a YouTuber goes away and does a ton of stuff off camera and doesn't show you any of it and then comes back and half the model's done. Well, um, yeah, I did a bit off camera last night. Um, actually, not as much as it looks like. Um, I've done a bunch of the detail painting and um, a bit of assembly. Uh, actual fact, some of this is just in place. Like so. But I guess the main thing to note is that I also went away and bought the Photo Etch Detail set. That instrument panel just wasn't working for me. Um, so I've gone and installed that in, and it is really super duper high detailed. There you go, you can see that there. Lots of nice detail on the instrument panel. The Photo Etch kit's from Edouard, I can't remember how much it cost me. I got the um, canopy masking set at the same time. So all of these details here, we saw them painted black last session many moons ago and all they've got on them now is just a little dry brushing of light grey. I've also painted the cockpit floor and bulkheads pretty neat and we're going to dirty that up when we get into it and, and put a little bit of uh, definition in there. So what else have I done? A little bit of detail painting, none of it particularly neat, I've done the seats or well, this seat in a kind of leather brown and I need to highlight that with a lighter brown. You can see I kind of have gone over the edge there a little bit and I need to neaten that up. Um, I need to still do detail painting on this area. This seat's got a bit of brown on the leather armrests. This is pretty much all photo etch that's gone on. You don't worry about the shiny bits because we're gonna give this whole thing a matte coat when we're done. And don't worry about those nasty round ejector pen marks on there because they'll be hidden. So just for funsies, I put together everything we've got so far. Just everything I've taken off the screws and you can see it's looking pretty good. That cockpit's looking nice. Obviously there's still a lot of work to do in there. The shape of the model's coming together well. Don't worry about the uh, yellow masking tape on the uh, gun sight there, I'm just leaving it on while I'm doing clear coats and things like that. I decided the other thing I want to do here as well is um, just get a whole load of wiring in down the sides of the uh, the cockpit and the walls and, and uh, really show what a crowded place it is. So to do that I'm going to take a little thing of 5mm masking tape here and the trusty steel rule and just get very narrow strips of it. There's going to be more than we need but I think we can probably sacrifice this much tape. And then I've cut these lengths of, you, you can buy lead wire from hobby shops. It lets you bend it very easily and it stays exactly where it's been put. But this is actually lead solder, 0.3 millimeter lead solder. I probably don't need to tell you that this contains lead, so it's poisonous, so don't eat it, no matter how tempted you are. So I'm just going to take up one of these strips. And then I'm just going to cut that end off. Let's work out where we want this particular wiring loom to go. And the good thing about this is you can just something we might do on other parts of the plane but not just here and I think we need one more one more piece of tape and what I'm finding here is that the, the tape isn't sticking that well to the solder but that's okay because it might mean that it's harder to get started but it also means you can slide the solder around inside these little rings once you've made them. So that's one little wiring loom. That's going to look really good painted. Now, I'm not being 
particularly accurate with it because remember in the uh, the original sort of conceit for this model it's it's a restored aircraft so I'm saying that they've taken a lot of liberties when restoring it so I'd like to take a moment to just show you a little bit of the detailing I've been putting in here we've got a wiring loom there now that's got paint on it pretty heavily but it's going to be not very visible from the outside so I think it's going to be okay with a bit of uh, with a bit of extra work uh, when we get to the weathering stage of the cockpit. Um, i put a little more detail onto this side of the cockpit. You can see I've got some of the wires in there and they're all cut off at places where the, the cockpit uh, floor is going to come in and such like. We've got the wiring looms in there. They've now been painted. More eagle-eyed among you might notice that it's not actually the same wiring loom as you saw me making. That's because I dropped that and it apparently fell through a wormhole in time and space into 14th century France or something because I cannot find it anywhere. Next thing to do, uh, oh, I've done a little uh, silver dry brushing. This is something that I, I do quite often for silvery parts, is actually paint the base colour in black and then just dry brush them really, really heavily. Engines and bare metal pieces can look really good with that. Okay, and they're going to be fairly hidden, but I still want to uh, make sure they're okay now. Still got a few bits of detail painting to do. I still want to do some dry brushing on the leather of the seats and things like that, because it's looking a bit plain. Uh, and I've still got to do the detail painting uh, below the uh, navigator seat there. The other thing I want to do, I've already got some paint out for this, is just take the pilot's seat and just put some paint chipping on the edges where the metal gets warm. So what I've got here is just the corner of a washing up sponge just dipped in that's Vallejo Model Air aluminium and I'm just dabbing it on my cloth here just to get rid of excess and then we gently just dab it on the edges. just of these metallic pieces. Places where it's going to get warm when somebody gets onto or out of the thing. And you can get, see that's giving a nice warm scratch chip paint kind of look. I'm going to do some more up there. And important with this is don't overdo it. Wait, I forgot. I want to tell you about Photo Edge. And so this is the photo etch fret. You can see I've put a lot of the instrument panels and dials and things on already um, here. I'm just trying to work out what that one's for. Have I missed one? Ha, huh, yeah, I missed one. I'll put it on in a second. But the main thing you can see here, and what I'm going to show you, is those seat belts right in the center of the frame. Um, if you're using a photo etch set in a kit, it will probably come with seat belts. Most of them do. So I'm going to show you on the pilot's seat because it's out of the kit and it's... Uh, now got the paintwork finished on it. So first of all, I'm gonna cut the photo etch off the fret. And this is just a craft knife with a brand new blade. I'm just checking very carefully where I'm supposed to be cutting. Because there's lots of little fiddly stringy pieces on these. I don't wanna accidentally cut them off. There we go, there's our pilot's seat belts. Now first of all we've got to glue these two little tiny pieces on which are the end of the straps for the shoulders. So I've got my super glue here, you've got to use super glue because photo etch is metal. And we just get a little on a cocktail stick. And we dab that on right where the part's going to go. You have to make sure that the piece is the right way around. Okay now those straps are stuck on, we can just use our tweezers to just turn the buckles over and push them down. And that gives us a degree of multi-leveled realness. So our pilot's seat shoulder straps are ready to go. I'm not going to glue them to the seat yet. First of all, you've got to make sure they sit right. So they're going to be coming out of that hole actually these straps reach don't quite reach to the bottom of the seat but if we just 
push them in. So now we know when we glue that, it's going to look good and sit right and all that good shit. Now I don't glue it all the way down, just at the top and then a little at the bottom to hold it in place. I'm getting a very tiny amount of glue from the tube there. Just get that in, we make sure it's sitting right. And we're going to come back to this in a little bit when we're doing a wash. So it won't look quite as bright and out of place as it does here right now. And we use that to go through. And you can use the clean end of the cocktail stick to stick it down with. That way you don't have to worry about picking things up and putting them down while you're trying to work. Then for the lap belts, second verse, same as the f These are a lot more bent, so this is where it's a lot more important to make sure you shape them before you use any glue. So we've got our pilot seat with our seat belts on. And that's pretty much the hardest part of doing the photo etch. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of that, and I'll see you on the other side. So we got a bit more detail and work done. Uh, we got these seat belts on here as well now. And we got the sort of cable going back from them. There is a piece of photo etch there. I don't think it's going to be very easy to see. But the main difference you're going to see is that I've also given everything a good going over with Tamiya panel line accent color. Now, I know a lot of people say you should do a gloss coat, put the accent color on, and then take it off with like a cotton bud or something so that it's a really nice subtle effect. But this is gonna be hidden inside a cockpit. It's gonna have this cockpit canopy glass over the top of it. It's gonna be harder to see. You've gotta paint for the back row. So I've just put the accent color straight on and uh, I'm just gonna show you on the, this cockpit door here which still needs to be done. So we've got a little decal to go on here as well but I'll put that on after the uh, accent color. I don't know, generally the advice with this is to just put a little tiny bit on edges and then it goes all around the edge but I just slap it on all over the place and I do then take it off with a cotton bud but not before it's left that whole thing just a little bit more textured so I'm just gonna go over and just take up the darkest bits but it leaves dirt and grime in those hollows It gives the whole thing a kind of rough, unpolished sort of a look. So if you really want to punch it, then you can you can put a gloss coat on and put panel line color on it again, just to, to really draw a line along those edges. But if you look here, at the way this has come out on those cables, I'm really happy with that. That's going to be visible through the cockpit without being too in your face. So let's go ahead and put some of this stuff together so we can see what it's going to look like. It's got that nice cramped feel of a mosquito cockpit now. We've got more detailing on there, so that feels a little nicer. It just has that kind of busy look that we're going for. Now you can see that seat is shiny as hell, which is not a problem, it's leather, but the um, seat belts and things are shining a lot. The instrument panel's got a gloss on it. Just about everything has. So the last thing I'm going to do before I close up this fuselage is to uh, just give everything uh, a matte coat, just from a from a rattle can. So I'll, I'll do that off camera, and I'll come back to you with the next stage of the build. So they've had a coat of Humbrol acrylic varnish, the matte kind, um, and they look really good. That shine is gone now. Those seat belts already look a lot more like cloth. And it's all looking, as the man says, fab you lus So there's just a couple of things left to do. Um, the instrument panel is looking a little bit drab now. And the shine's gone out of all those dials. So I'm just going to one by one go in and get a little I don't know yet if I'm going to use gloss varnish or if I'm going to use future, but just go over each of those dials a little bit on the edge of a pin and just put a little 
glossy dial face on each of those to give a little visual contrast. We'll be able to see that when you look up through the door and that kind of thing. So it's definitely going to be worth it. There's a couple of uh, a couple of dials on the uh, fuselage inner as well. So there, I hope you can see. There's now just a little film of its uh, what is it Tamiya X22, just their normal gloss clear over each of the dials and I've just applied that with a cocktail stick so hopefully that'll dry off nicely. You can also see I've taken the tape off the uh, reflector gun sight now and that's looking pretty good. Just gotta wait for that to dry and that's the exciting bit. 